All right, what's up, guys? We're back, episode 12, featuring Ayrton Jenitin. Ayrton, how's it going today, man? It's going good. How are you guys? Oh, can't complain. What, uh... I know you were going to race Knoxville this weekend. What's now the plan? Um, so there's some uh, Power Eye uh, 410 stuff down south in Paducah, Kentucky, that I think we're going to try to go run. And uh, they're also in Benton, Missouri. So we're going to see if they can uh, get it in with the weather. But uh, if they can, that's where we'll be. Um, what do you, you know, we're on that topic right now. You said 410. What do you prefer more? 410, 360, what's kind of, what's more your forte? And I guess, what do you, what do you prefer to be in? Um, I really love the 410 stuff. Like when I first started racing, obviously I ran a lot of 360s. Um. You know, there's nothing wrong with running 360s. I tend to, uh, we'll usually tend to run about five or six 360 races a year, maybe a little bit more, just depending on, um, you know, the time frames of when those races are. So um, definitely prefer the 410. I feel like it suits my driving style a lot more. It's a little more of a finesse instead of a, you know, momentum style race. And I feel like the finessing of the car kind of suits my driving style a little bit better. Yep. I know you're sitting over there thinking of something, so I ask it. What? Anything. I'm not, no, I, I wasn't thinking of something. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cody's not in here with us yet, guys. He'll be in here shortly. Anybody in the chat, if you guys got questions for Ayrton, we'll be reading through the comments here throughout this. Um, let's talk a little bit iRacing-wise. We see the wheel in front of you. How much does it transfer over for you iRacing to real life? Um, really, the, the biggest thing you get from the iRacing to real life is kind of your reaction time and kind of the sense of how the cars react and like, you know, the way they move. So, um, you know, really the main thing is though, is the reaction time. You see a lot of, uh, real life guys who will play it every now and then. And really it's just to kind of keep your actions sharp. Um, it's a, you can use it for a tool as uh, to kind of keep yourself sharp in the off season. That's pretty much what I do with it. Um, yeah, just mainly for reaction time. And then obviously to have fun with your buddies, that's about all there is to it. Um, Favorite car or track on iRacing? What's <laughs> yeah? I, I mean, it's it's basic because my favorite car and track on iRacing is gonna be this is my favorite in real life and in the and uh, stuff too. So I really love the 410 stuff in iRacing, and I re really enjoy Knoxville there too. I feel like Knoxville is probably the raciest track in the game, um, especially when it gets the curve, like the way it ramps up in two. Like right. I probably bumps. yeah, I've wrecked every every race I've ran there, either wreck or win in that corner. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's, really awesome. I think there's a few YouTube videos of people that have me just like destroying half the field over there. So, <laughs> but no, uh, it's uh, Knoxville's Knoxville's really fun in the game, and then obviously in real life, Knoxville's the sprint car capital of the, of the world for a reason. No, yeah, how much I does just... it compare like over real life um, in the game there? Man, it, it's pretty similar. Like, obviously, everything's laser scanned, so it's really, really close. Um, the way the dirt obviously reacts is a lot different because in the game, yeah. you don't get the marbles kicked out to the middle. Like, in real life, you can kind of make a run through the middle late in the race when people are running the bottom or the top, and they'll leave that middle open and stuff. So, um, yeah, there's it's it's similar pretty much. You know, I mean, obviously, it's laser scanned, so, like, the track's pretty close. Uh, the only thing different is, like, in real life, you'll get the... Uh, at the start of the season, they tend to have the berm a little bit bigger than it is in the game. Then it kind of gets knocked right. down throughout the year and gets a little more to where it is in the game. Yeah, I've seen Rodman stand on it next to it where it's like four foot tall. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It, it was crazy. It's like usually when he's next to it, that's like the middle of the season. Like usually at the start of the season, it's probably about six or seven inches even taller than that. Jeez. So it gets they get it pretty big to start the year. And then I think... They've had it a little bit shorter for uh, the truck series stuff. So now that the trucks ain't there, they're probably going to have it a little bit steeper than it usually is anyways. Oh. Well, Rodman's fairly tall, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, I, I bet he's every bit of like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, oh, really? Oh, he yeah. makes me, I'm like, I'm 5'11", and he makes me look short. There's like an interview we're doing. Um, we were at Knoxville, like 21 or whatever. We're doing an interview together. And I'm just like, hey, how's it going, Chase? You know, it's just like one of them deals. <laughs> yeah. See, and I didn't think, because like on TV, you know, he doesn't look that tall till you see him standing next to a car. I mean, obviously, gravel. Standing next to Brad. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah Brad and Gravel's not too tall. So, I mean, when he's standing next to them guys, you really can't see it. Yeah. Um. Who's probably one of the coolest guys you've got to race against? 
Oh, man, I'm a huge Donnie Shots fan. So anytime I get a race with Donnie, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I also like, I really like racing with gravel. Gravel's, um, I mean, like, I don't get a race with gravel as much as I like. I need to get a little bit farther up to the front sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, no, those guys race a lot of respects. All the outlaw guys race good. And then, uh, um, man, I don't know. Like, Austin McCall, me and him have had a lot of good races together since probably 2020 on. I think we've probably had about three to four races where each of us have been battling each other for either, you know, a, podium or top five at knoxville or we run like some local sprint invader stuff i would drive for a guy named scott boner and um you know i'd run for him and he'd run for another guy and we'd be racing each other there all the time so i feel like me and austin race each other well and race each other with a lot of respect we both race each other pretty hard so i think austin's probably like one of my guys i really like to race and then um you know obviously like an idol i like to race against is like donnie shot so i think that's pretty cool any guys that you hang out with at the track when you're there quite a bit um, or you know it's like we travel so much like typically you only get you know our knoxville guys we really get to hang out with um you know like we park next to matt jewel every week so i usually talk to matt jewel um and then obviously i'll talk to uh austin and carson mccarl a lot and then uh you know my my other buddy jj hickle he moved out to ohio so i don't get to see him no more but those are kind of my click guys that we always kind of like pitted along the same spot at knoxville Right, and then uh, you know, like usually at Houston, you kind of get next to the same guys there too. So we'll kind of, I think we end up parking next to Dob Meyer a lot, um, and then that Brendan Mullins as well. Yeah. So fun fact, JJ, you know, being from Washington, my uncles raced with him along with like Travis Jacobson. You know, growing up was racing against my uncles out at out at Skagit. So I've known JJ since I was a little kid. Yeah, JJ's a really good dude too, and he's uh he works hard at it. So I was glad to see he got a good ride for this season. Um, you know, he had a good ride last year too. But I think this year he's got a really good shot, and he's going to get to race as much as you know he's going to get to race for a lot. And he's doing the full All Star deal. So, um, you know, obviously I don't know how much me and him will race each other. I know they got a few Midwest shows, so um, you know, we try to hang out when we can. Uh, the first question. In the... Go ahead, Grover. Oh, I was going to say, first question in the chat is how close have you been to re- or to Montana for racing? Uh, the closest I've been to Montana, oof. Oh, I would have. Something. Yeah, I'd say Houston's. Um, I've never been up to Montana before. Like, I know they used to have, like, the Grizzly Nationals up there with ASCS, but, you know, when all that stuff was kind of going on, we were racing 360s, but we weren't really traveling while. We were kind of just a local deal, so... Um, I'd say Houston's probably the closest I've been. Uh, I don't know the last time they've had a 410 show while I've been in 410s. I know they ran at Black Hills, but I know that ain't that's kind of close to Montana, but still not Montana area. Yeah. Well, and Joseph, he's not missing much. We all know Montana sucks. <laughs> Wait, what, <laughs> what, what, what there, comes out of Montana? There's, I think there's one. Did it? Wasn't Sammy racing in Montana last weekend or two weekends ago? Uh, no, that was down in Oklahoma. Colorado. Was no, it, it was Colorado. It was Colorado. Yeah, Port City yeah. or whatever, because he was racing with Bradley yeah. when Bradley rolled. Yeah. It so, actually it actually sounded like a track from, like, Oklahoma, but it was in Colorado yeah. is what it was. It was, like, was. Right so on the like, border or something like that. Yeah. It was, like, El Paso or something or other. Yeah, El Paso Speedway in Cal- Colorado. I was like, I thought that was in Texas until I saw the results or something. <laughs> About <laughs> uh, back going back to pitting and being around the guys, is there anybody you tried not to pit around? Uh, you know, I, I, got a, I got a few guys. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> no, I, well, really, man, it's like it just all kind of depends on when you get there. But there's a few times if you pull in, you see a guy you don't really want to pit next to, whether you know you're racing a lot and you guys are kind of rivals, or you know you guys are always close. You don't want to see what you're doing. You try to you know right. s- steer the different direction when you pull in the pits. But I won't name any names. But uh, there's a few guys I like to beat that I don't want to pit next to either. So. Do you have Everybody's any rivals that. That, that you race with a lot? Um, you know, I, it's, it's kind of funny. I think the guy that, um, like, my biggest, like, not necessarily, I guess you could say rival, whatever, but the guy that uh, we always tend to find each other in a weird situation where it's never good good blood is uh, me and Brian Brown. Like, it's kind of a crazy story. Like, I grew up being his biggest, like, I was a huge Brian Brown fan when I grew up, and then uh, we just started racing each other, had a few rough run ends and then it just kind of you know just took off like that you just kind of get to the point where you guys you know we respect i respect him um as like what he's done for his team and what he's built over there um but you know that's the one guy it's like i'm gonna beat anybody i want to beat him every single night so 
Right. I, it's like, I don't care if we run 21st and 22nd. If I beat him, it's like, you know what? There's a little bit, <laughs> little yep. bit to smile about in the night. So. That was me last fair. night. That's, that's me. Fair. That's that's me and I racing with Ashton. We funny. <laughs> Literally last night we're running Knoxville and I'm like, I'm not chasing that fucking tail tank again. You're not getting by me. <laughs> I said, we're going balls to the walls. We're throwing it over the shoulder. I put it up on the curb, and I ended up at the bottom of the track. And he's, he went around the top of me, and I'm like, <laughs> all right. Looks like, it looks like I'm chasing that tail tank for the white flag, I guess. Yeah, we were chasing that tail tank until I kind of got into him, which is just like a racing ordeal. Like I was yeah. trying to hold my line, and I was sliding up, and he was cutting down at the same time, and it just happened. But then I kind of junked his car. Oh, I was junked before that. that. That's I, how I, I get I That's how I get around Ashton. I just junk him. Can, I don't even think you can race Knoxville and I racing without junking yourself on the on the curb. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll be in the you hit the this dirt, quarter. These guys are the rear ends out of it. Yeah, I'm I'm going I'm to the trying. front or I'm dying on the cushion. One of the two. Yeah, I was I was just trying so hard to stay away from the cushion. I was just waiting for the bottom to come in, and then it finally came in. And then there's there's a racing or, ordeal where somebody gets up on the fucking cushion and they can't keep their shit straight and they start net coding and then the guy behind him starts freaking out and then he cuts uh, down and <laughs> coming up and that's we just the worst the part the it, net code is the worst and then, i can't even got, tell you how many times is. and then you got dickheads like mcgathy in there that just try to wreck you <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even tell you like i I'll, i used to get on like really early like 7 30 in the morning and race yep. some australian buddies of mine yeah and they would be like like i do i don't know what it is my internet lately when i was playing i racing before i kind of got off but it was like, dude, they like they could never see me. I just disappear for a lap, and they just they show up and they just boom, turn me right in the wall. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? They're like, oh, I didn't see. You. I'm like, what? That's <laughs> why I don't want to race with you guys anymore. You guys wreck me all the time. <laughs> Which I mean, they're Australian, so it doesn't really help. You know, it's like not, right, they're, not they're with those guys. Yeah, yeah, their whole racing style is a lot different than yeah, ours. Yeah, it's completely they're... different. But the only thing that they get is checkers or wreckers for sure. So that is on... not a lie. What? Wreckers are checkers. checkers are wreckers with them, yeah. man. At Clayton all Davies, time. if you're listening. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you say Brian Brown growing up was kind of the guy you watched. Was that kind of the hero growing up? I mean, or did you have an outlaw guy that just, besides Donnie, maybe that stuck out? Uh, man, dude, I don't know. Like, I'd have to pick, like, Donnie was always my favorite, like, oh, every time. Yeah. I just loved watching him win, but, like, <laughs> I love from, it. from Missouri when I was really young, we used to sponsor a guy who raced named Josh Fisher, so, um, like, I always loved watching Josh race. Is that why you got and Fisher then, on your car? That's a, two, two, two different, different things. Okay. Two different families. But, uh, no, Josh Fisher, his, uh, his dad helped us out a lot this off season, uh, kind of, like, renovating our shop and stuff, and then he helped us build some of the cars and mount some bodies and stuff. So he did some good work for us too. But I've known, we've known that family forever too. But no, two totally different families, two different spellings, but all from the same area type thing. We're all That's like cool. kind of central Missouri. But <clears throat> no, so Josh Fisher, um, I watched him a lot when I was younger. And then obviously like a local guy too was Jonathan Cornell. I always watched Jonathan Cornell race. And then uh, Brown, Shots, and... Uh, I don't know. I think I, I really liked watching Bronson Mason when he ran at Knoxville too. See, and it's it's funny because I'm a North Dakota boy, and I absolutely hate shots. Absolutely <laughs> hate the guy. Out of boy, you're not like... missing anything. <laughs> and I just me... I just love what he's done. I, okay, I forgot one too. It was Jason Johnson. Jason Johnson was yeah. like, like he was a, like he was from Louisiana, but he like made his roots here in Missouri. Yeah, and uh, like the one thing I'd say about Jason was he was like a true racer. Like he would go anywhere to race. Like he wouldn't just like be oh I'm a you know ASCS national guy and go into my local track on a Sunday night. Like he'd go there and he'd come back and run on a local track for you know fifteen hundred thousand when he didn't care. He just wanted to race and get better. Yeah, it didn't uh, matter. You know, he worked. Or, yeah, yeah, and he worked really hard. Worked really hard to did to grow what he grew. What he did, you know why he was still here. So. Jason was like, actually, Jason kind of helped us get started. So um, there's a crazy story with all how that went out. But um, yeah, so Jason actually bought uh, one of my first like race ready car. I'm, actually, the car we kind of designed all the cars we got now is off of the car we bought from Jason and uh, Phil Dietz. And then like we kind of helped Phil Dietz put his micro together when he still ran micro sprints. So um, yeah, I've known I knew Jason back in 2016 and Phil since 2016. So I've known them for a while. And then actually, ironically, my cousin is the car chief over there at JJR now. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. And JJR, like from my old shop, was probably only like 30 minutes away. 
So maybe a little bit of rivalry once you start getting to run up front with the outlaws with Macedo then, or no, I uh, I don't know. I mean, I would never say we have a rivalry with them. Well, but... <laughs> no, I just mean like family wise, because then it's like, oh hey, you know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when Gravel was running for, uh, I mean, like every time, like I always, obviously, I want to beat everyone, but it's like when you race, you know, the guys you look up to the most, or you know, grew up racing with the most. Like when you beat those guys, it's like. A little more feeling, rewarding, yeah. you know, like I feel like I remember one time, I think we were at Terre Haute in 2020, I was having like a crazy good night, and I think Gravel was running fourth, and I got to his back bumper or something right before I wrecked, and I was like, like, dude, it was like, I just had a giant, I knew I was in a helmet just smiling, like, dude, I'm about ready to, I'm racing with the JJR 41 car, like, we're, like, we're fast, you know, type <laughs> feeling. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, anytime you get a race with guys like Donnie or Carson or Brad or any of them guys, you know, it's uh, it's pretty sweet. Have you got a race with Kyle yet? Uh, actually, uh, I I beat Larson at the night before the or the Joker's Wild this last year. We were racing for tenth, and uh, he tried. I like totally like chopped him into the mud <laughs> on that old door, like going down the back stretch <laughs> for the for staying the top ten. I chopped the crap out of him. Oh, but uh, no, I, that's about the only time I really got a race with Kyle was a few nights at El Dora. We're we're gonna hit the chat. Kind of ironic. I'm wearing this shirt. Tim Essenson's in the chat. Jenatin is my hero. Shut up, Timmy. Hey, <laughs> you kiss Tim, ass. Tim's, hey, he's won me a few i racing races, man. I always, I'd always text him every time he'd wreck his car, and then next thing I know, I'd be, I'd be going by because he's tore up. He just pull up from the guy that I was racing, kind of help me out with. Dude, <laughs> if there's one Appreciate more, that, Tim. if there's one guy that wrecks in i racing, I think more than you, it's Tim Essenson. Oh yeah, it is Tim Like yeah, I think it's just the real race car stuff. We're so used to just pushing cool. it as hard as we can. Then you guys racing. are like, you know, the lines yeah. and you have all these wild. Things. It's it's always when you're <laughs> trying to cut or something. You know, yeah, you're, we're, yeah, we're like here, no mirror yeah. whatsoever. So you're just like, oh, I don't know if there's a car there. Fuck it. Nope. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah, but, yeah. It's it's funny. Funny. <laughs> yeah, I've I'm sure I've wrecked everyone in here at least once or twice. It happens. Yeah. You'll be like, you'll have that. You'll have that on them big jobs like I race. <laughs> T- Timmy, are you okay? So Timmy's still in here. Question for you: What are you doing this weekend since you're not running Knoxville? Should I just come out to Fargo and we do a live podcast with you? Tell him to drive down here to Missouri and come race. Dude, dude thing is, is he's only two hours from me. If his fat ass would get off the couch and come see me, he could just be here right now. We could do a double header right now. The funny thing is, he's a lot skinnier than you. Yeah. He's still, a, he, he's still a pansy, though. You should see him when I go to punch him. He flinches like a little girl. I would, too, if I was that tiny. He, uh, Tim Essenson goes, oh, BS, chubby boy. That's all the 57X. Yeah, you're not wrong. I, I do junk my shit a lot. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. I can't I, I race them. anymore. The yeah. bad part is, is I I wreck it when the leaders are getting ready to lap me. That's when it seems like I wreck. It. I almost took Cody out at Port That's Royal when he was lapping me the other day. Oh, well, I've had some I've had some races at Port Royal where I've uh I've been lead. I think I was leading with one of my buddies in the on a three sixty race there, and I got like I went down to like I don't even know why I did. I slipped myself in the last corner of the last lap, just messing around. <laughs> And I dumped the car out and backed up the track. And luckily he was there and he KO'd me, flipped off up, off the track. You know, when you get up into the pit area there, you just like get bouncing on the concrete. And yeah. I, he like straightened me out and I ended up winning. He was like, we're going to go one, two. And he ended up running like 16th. <laughs> he was so <laughs> mad at me. I thought it was so funny. Uh, I was like, yeah. I was like, well, my bad. That was on me. Tim says he leaves Friday to go back to Omaha to race 360s on Sundays. So I wonder where's he racing at yeah, 360 where, at. That's my question, because I'm pretty sure Houston still has snow. Omaha. Oh, fun fun facts. If you look up, uh, there's a website called Sprint Car Ratings, and this is how I I literally make my schedule off them. You go to their uh, website, and you can actually see all the. He's racing in Thayer County, Nebraska, with Midwest with the uh, Belvern Bank Sprint Car Series. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's you that can look called? all that up. It's the sprintcarratings.com okay it'll show you like all the active uh man i should be getting something for a plug for these guys Um, (laughs) (laughs) but you can go there and you can look up like all like like right now like it's got the 2023 ratings the 2022 ratings 2020 like all the ratings from 2015 on it's like it rates the drivers off like who they've raced and their performances 
it shows you how much money they've made everything down to the t and then like you can look up like all the schedules like i think they got uh wing sprint cars wingless sprint cars midgets silver crown late models big block modified it's like they got, they got like, it all yeah they got a pretty they're a pretty advanced website like it's that's where i get a lot of my information timmy goes yes so sir yes sir genitals yeah, so you're looking yeah. at that, and that determines your schedule exactly. What is it there that you're looking at that's going to determine where you go for the year? Um, so a lot of like what I do is like right now, like Knoxville got canceled. So instead of like Googling or like Facebook searching what's racing, I'd literally just go here and be like, "All right, here's the list of everyone racing uh, Friday night, day. the twenty first. Like, like it literally will tell you. So like if it's an obviously Knoxville's canceled, but they're on the list. But it'd be like. Attica, Paducah, Kentucky, Jacksonville, Lernerville, Williams Grove is all racing 410s. Uh, Texarkana, Arkansas, Thunderbird, I-96, Talladega, Alabama, Douglas County, Oregon, Ocean, California, all racing 360s. On wow, it's got us on there. Yeah, it's got everything, man. It's literally, it's it's legit. That's how you, uh, you go kind of build. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Weekend too. That'll be, that'll be kind of nice, too. I mean, Ashton, you're coming out for high banks from Oregon. I mean, you'll be kind of hanging out that week with Hofer and Colby. I mean, that might not be bad. Say say we rain out one night, knock on wood, but we could look that yeah. up and be like, oh, hey, you know, they're going to be racing here. Let's go down and watch some late models or something. something yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what all they have, like, for late model stuff, but I know, like, pretty much you got about everything you could think of sprint car racing on there. Like, you can see every single track that's going to race that weekend. That's it's funny. Maybe, maybe because I've got on there. Yeah, and it's so easy for me to do, like, if, like, say I was planning on going to Knoxville or something this weekend, they rained out, and I'm like, all right, well, i got to figure out something else to do. I've got so many tracks that are right around me, because I can go to Attica, I can go to Fremont, I can go to Sharon, I can go to Atomic, I can go to Eldora, i got Lima Land five minutes away. i got all these tracks that are so close that it's a guaranteed shot one of them's going to be racing something. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you can just kind of, I mean, I don't think they have any 305 stuff on here. I mean, nah. You know, whatever. Nobody but like, even not, the 360. I, I didn't even stay for the 305 feature at Attica last last weekend. Oh, with the All Stars. Yeah, after the 410s ran and and uh, Brett Marks went from 20th to first. I was yeah, like, you know was, what? I've seen it all race. for the night. I'm good. Yeah, I'm you out. don't even. <laughs> so don't even need to. they ain't gonna top that. So fun <laughs> fact. Oh, yeah, right. Fun fact. With the well, I don't know. There was this one 305 that I, it was like a 1S, and, and I'm pretty sure I could have gotten out there and done a lot better, and I've never raced a sprint car in my life, but this dude was just putzing around the bottom. I think he got lapped five times in a 10-lap oh, wow. race. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, well, we were rooting for him, though. We, we were really hoping he'd, he'd just, like, you know, figure out where the loud pedal was and go for it. <laughs> uh, fun, fun little story about 305s. Timmy was having motor issues this last summer. And so he decides to go hot lap with the 305s at Fargo. And I'm not kidding you, he lapped the whole field probably six times. Oh, God. Hot laps. <laughs> <laughs> and a 410. Oh, wow. He was throwing like double there. sliders, triple sliders. And I'm like, dude, you're going to end up junking these 305s before they even get a race. <laughs> Those poor guys. <laughs> Are those other cars? I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> Jack totally, totally get Bobby on it. You know exactly yeah. what we were saying this last weekend, watching that 1S go around the track, and every time everybody go past them, we're like, are those the other cars? Well, it's funny because we were talking about Timmy's interview, which, Timmy, you suck at interviews. Get get good. Um, we were talking about you not knowing <laughs> what to do with your hands in your interviews. Um, Joseph, he doesn't breathe. He's got to catch his breath. <laughs> get back in the gym, fatty. I love you, Timmy. Uh, you can come work out with me. We'll go on a run. Dude, the only thing <laughs> Tim lap him and runs. The only thing Timmy <laughs> runs is his mouth. <laughs> Sounds like you. <laughs> um, Joseph Brooks goes. So how close to the re- or to real is running Lima Land in the sprints on iRacing versus real life? Have you ran Lima Land? I have not been to Lima Land. The only time hey, I ever would have gone to Lima Land was like the Dust Bowl race, and obviously we didn't go to that one. Um. I'd say it's pretty similar when the track's right. I mean, you know, you get up on the fence there in the game a lot, and I'd say, like, I've, from what I've seen in the videos, it's kind of kind of the same way. Well, you're definitely not missing much. <clears throat> Since the new owners have taken it over, like, the track prep has not really been there. I remember a couple of years ago when the All-Stars were there, they about packed up their shit and left because it was so dusty. I mean, they had people passing below the 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 light poles, even. Like, yeah, there's, I, they, I, I thought it was last year. They couldn't even... Yeah, maybe it was last year. They yeah, because I, I remember, anything. I think Dietrich ended up winning. Yeah, yeah, and Danny was the only reason why they stayed anyway. 
when she was there. Yeah. You have so many people in the crowd because there, sh- there ain't jack shit to do in Lima. Trust me. <laughs> so, <laughs> when, <laughs> so, when, so when Lima <laughs> lands running, everybody's going to go, and you're always going to have a packed house when you go. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not the best racing. I would definitely drive an hour and a half and go to Eldora or the Attica or even 45 minutes to Waynesfield, for Christ's sake. Did you see uh, oh. Timmy's comment, Jonathan? No, I have. I don't have any ass up. He goes, "I get better. I get better. I just forget to breathe, you dick." <laughs> <laughs> How do you forget to breathe, dude? dude honestly, hey, okay. So, you, so I, first, five month old figured out how to breathe. The first time yeah, I climbed in my you. sprint car last year, and I was only in a five three. I mean, I climbed in it, and the first time I actually stepped on it, I'm going down the back stretch, and I'm like. <gasps> <laughs> like pushed back in my seat and i'm like okay i gotta learn how to breathe and as i i could find myself as i was like breathing out i'd push down as i was breathing in i would let off and i'm like okay i gotta figure out how to breathe and push the throttle at the same time <laughs> i'm new oh, man, i don't know what to do no i admit it I've, oh, i came well, back I, in from oh go ahead go ahead well so we were running so the first time i ever led a race i was at okay so the first time i ever led my first 410 race at knoxville like i started second i took the lead like had a really good start we got rolling good and i remember i was going down the back probably like four or five laps in and i'm like man dude like i don't like i was like feeling lightheaded i'm like bro this ain't right you know but like i remember like i was gripping the wheel like white knuckles grip like death grip on the steering wheel and I remember, like, I probably ran those first four or five laps, like, wide open, didn't didn't even think about breathing the throttle, touching the brake. I was like, we're going, like, we're in the lead for Knoxville. Like, we're not letting off. And um, literally, I remember, like, looking up at the scoreboard. Like, I thought I was, like, almost done with the race. I looked up, and we're, like, four laps in. I'm like, breathe, breathe, <laughs> breathe, breathe. Because it's like, you just, you just, like, dude, it's like, when you get tense, man, there's sometimes you just, you forget about everything. But uh, no, yeah, you can definitely forget to breathe. I'm sure at Peebley, he probably felt that because Peebley's, uh, Peebley's oh, yeah. pretty intense. So shout out also to Timmy's wife, I'm going to call her, even though girlfriend, <laughs> Caitlin Skalicki, sends me this and it says date night, I guess. They got the podcast up on the big up on the big screen. On the, on the big screen. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Heck, yeah. Also, dude, I remember Caitlin used to kick the shit out of Tim and Legends, dude. She used to beat him almost every week. And Tim would get so mad. <laughs> and now he's dating her, you know? He's got to date someone faster than him, so. Duh. That works. <laughs> well, yeah, isn't it like, um, that's isn't Kyle Larson's wife, Brad Sweet's sister? Or yeah. Something yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Yep. Dude, she, that was, I don't know she, if she, she had knows, a or not. She knows a thoroughbred racer when she sees one, and she's like, yeah, I'm going for that guy. <laughs> See, that would, that would give me a major rivalry with Sweet if I was Larson. Like, I cannot let my oh, wife's yeah. brother beat me. Oh, I, I bet they, uh, you know, they definitely, do. definitely go back and forth with it. On who's well, yeah, I, bet, I bet Christmas dinners are very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, they, the thing they is, uh, the thing is, if they, about dude, close if, races if, or something. If I would they say. were, if they was oh, to yeah. get in a fight, dude, their reach and height is all about the same too. So I mean, they're yeah, they're, they're about the same it's, size. It's Actually, what's fight. crazy is Caitlin's the tallest one of the group. Yeah, she's taller she's, than both of them. She's the ultimate drinker too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy yeah. just goes, "You're a cunt, chubby boy." But yes, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's why I would, I, I would love to see this on pay per view. What they need to put on pay per view is they need to put Brad Sweet and they need to put Kyle Larson on a couple horses. Let them race around the Kentucky Derby and see who's better. Dude, right. I, to- be I told, I told you last night. Someone posted They're jockey on, size. Someone yeah, exactly. Posted They're on perfect Facebook. jockey size. Someone posted on Facebook. Give Kyle Larson a horse for the Kentucky Derby. I, I say let's do it. Those let's guys would be so it. screwed. Those dude, guys those little Mexicans screwed. would just beat the shit out of him. Dude, Larson would be trying to throw a slide game. job on a horse. He'd be, he'd be like hitting him with a stick. Like he'd just yeah. hit the stick against their horse, like messing it all up or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, they'd probably just be hitting each other with the stick. Yeah. Be like, ah. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right. So now that I know Hofer's in here, I saved this question for Hofer, and I did. I asked you about it. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about Zierfox. I mean, <laughs> what a fuck. Yeah, that was uh, a little wild. Like, we used to, like, yeah, I know you watched the video earlier. It's just one of them yeah. deals, man. I don't know. Like, he just probably had a lapse of judgment or something going down the back stretch there. It's like he tried tried telling me I was in the wrong because I wasn't all the way to the top. I was like, dude, I was in the top for, like, two-thirds of the corner. Like, I was up there by the center of the corner. I was... 
like, yeah, I wasn't, I was, my stuff wasn't stuck and driving our car was off. But yeah, he didn't even, didn't lift, didn't even turn, I think, until he cleaned me out. So, and the only reason he ended up turning was because he turned me and I ended up, he bounced off my car. So that was the only time right. he ever ended up turning. But yeah, no, it was wild. Um, definitely, uh, like, it was crazy because it's like, you know, like, you don't think you're going to get just ass packed at Knoxville going right. 100, 120 miles per hour down the straightaway. Dude, I mean, like, when I got hit, it's like, I just spun around so quick. It literally felt like you were in eye racing. <laughs> just, like, it was just an eye racing, just, like, whoa, what in the world? I just kept going. And I was like, I was like, dude, I can't believe I kept going. I don't know if anything's tore up or not, you know? So How I much drove, did it junk the front end, though? Oh, it destroyed the car. Destroyed like, it, it shoved yeah. the right front over, like, four inches and bent both down tubes, the bottom rails of the front of the car, like, knocked, like, Bent the torsion tubes back, destroyed pretty much everything in the front end. So you were done uh, after that. Yeah, yeah, I was done. That's actually like, I was like going to just go straight to the work area. But right. I, 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 I mean, I could tell my car was destroyed. Like I knew when I was going around, when I could feel my frame bouncing off the ground. I'm like, well, at least I know the bars are out of it. Shocks. Yeah, video you can't out. see much, but I figured there's a lot more. Yeah, it was bad. Like it tore a lot up. So like I went over there, just like stopped where he was. I was like, hey, you can come talk to me after the races. That's all I said. Like there was way too many people around to like cause a serious commotion. Right. So well, I just told him, and, and yeah. The funny part is, as you said earlier, you didn't that fight that went viral. You know, you said you had no. Yeah, I had them people no. Were. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, yeah, I was like. I didn't even know about it until um, I think someone came over and said, oh, did you see the fight Zerfoss got in? I'm like, I didn't fight Zerfoss. Like, I thought they said I did it. They were like, I was like, no, that was not me. Like, I had no part of that. Like, I would have just done it done it then and there if I wanted to fight him, you know. Was, was it one of your crew members or even anybody no. you knew? The, no. dude, the no. dude in the big bib overalls. That's the one guy I remember. <laughs> yeah. That's the guy I would have been going after. I'd have been like, I'm going after that big motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Well, I don't yeah, really big guy on big guy. You're not just going to yeah, let the littlest guy you. on the team take on <laughs> yeah. the big, big overall guy. No, I thought it was funny. It was funny because, um, <laughs> yeah, it was just funny. I don't know, man. It was one of them deals. You just look back at it and kind of laugh about it. Kind of yeah. roll your eyes, like I can't believe this was a thing. Yeah, <laughs> have you? Because it's like it never, like we never should have been in the wreck. Like it should have been, a, it was so avoidable. So then you're just like, dude, why did we even? Why was that even a thing, man? You know, it's like, come on. Have you been in a fight yet? Uh, not not sprint car racing. No, I know, like go like go kart racing, man. Dude, there were times we'd go run some go kart stuff, and there there would always be a brawl in a go kart race. <laughs> Um, it just seemed like that was a thing. That was like the cool thing. Everyone's kids were trying to be Jeff Gordon. Everyone just get mad, you know. And uh, then a few micro stuff, but nothing like no like real fights. Just kind of like a bunch of people just basically kicking rocks and yelling at each other. Yeah, well, I feel like I feel like the people that race those they've they've really they don't have the money, the big money to go race other yeah. stuff. Yeah, like so, so yeah, when they get their shit junked, like. They're thinking, you know what? That's that just ruined like a whole two months worth of paychecks. That I'm gonna have to fix this now. Like I'm pissed about it. I'm gonna let it out right now. Yeah, yeah. They take it next level sometimes. It's, I mean, if the opportunity comes and a dude wants to start swinging at me, like I ain't gonna start it because it's like if you start it, you're kind of you're gonna end up being the bad guy. So you got to kind of watch how it is. But I, I mean, if someone started swinging, it's like it's self defense at that point. I mean, right. whether you win or not, yeah, I'll just say it's self defense. I feel, like I feel like that's a lot of everybody's mentality in the pits. It's yeah. like, I'm not going to start anything, but I, if somebody does, I'll damn sure be the one to finish I'll it. I'll start yeah. it, dude. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be that pit guy that walks over and just <laughs> you know swinging for no it. reason. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Holford, be on my race team, Grover. <laughs> that's, that's Dude, I'm the guy you favorite. want on your race team. So when you're too big of a bitch to go hit the guy that wrecked you, yeah, I guess. Exactly you're, right. just, you're, you're just the guy that I want in my trailer as a good <laughs> friend of the team, but doesn't touch anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't want you turning the wrenches. Never, I'm the, no wrench I'm the certified mud scraper. That's, that, no, I don't know, man. The, that's kind of tire prepper guy. You're the, I don't know. Guy. I gotta, I gotta I scrape already. the mud first. Uh, yeah, scrape the mud, then the tires. Scrape the mud, yeah. scrape the mud, then then clean the mud covers. Hey, then we'll see if there's anything hey, left. Hey, hey, dickheads! I had my own sprint car, damn it. Yeah, and you all you did was scrape the mud. Where's yeah. it at now? <laughs> where's, it, where's it at now? Somebody else's garage, because I can't afford the fucking shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Holfer, you're a little late to the party. He said, uh. 
one of the guys that he idolized and stuff was um, Shots. And then biggest enemy. I mean, you never really did say. I know you said friendly rivalry, you know, you and McCarl. Because you guys had traded back uh, and forth. But Brian Brown, too. So Yeah, Brown's probably my biggest rival, I would say. Like, we respect each other, but that's about as far as we go. We don't. I don't know if he likes me. I don't really. <laughs> oh, for what size of diecast really. was it? <laughs> yeah. We, we just we... kind of get, yeah. A one sixty four scale because he couldn't afford a one eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's got. With Hofer's that's question, we did talk to him, Hofer, about that stuff, but we didn't ask you i racing side of it. You know, who do you like to race against in i racing and hate to race against in i racing? I like racing against Hofer. He's clean. <laughs> You don't race me dirty anytime I wreck him. He apologizes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I don't know. I really, I don't know, man. I like racing with just about anybody on there. I feel like most of the time it's funny when you get revved up. I'm just like, yeah, man, it's all right. I'll just get my real car out this weekend. I ain't gonna worry about it. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, no, 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 but there's been a couple of times I've looked in there and I've seen your name and I'm like, oh man. Well, there's, there's gonna, gonna be a wreck midway through this race. There's gonna be a wreck midway through this race because every time I'm in there, man, it's like I just go like I'm just like, and I mean. I got this Logitech wheel. I don't. I can't feel crap. Yeah, my pedals aren't right. Like we'll I don't. Hook I, up with, we'll hook you up with a boat's a wheel, I, man. I need to get it. something. If I had something nicer, I've, I, I, I wanted to try to do the. Pro, I want to try to do, do the pro deal, but I'm just too busy to kind of do it. But right. I'd have to get a better wheel and pedal set first. But I think it'd be fun to do it. So. We'd all be lying, though, if we hadn't seen your name and we're like, fuck, are we going to race this race? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure. the same way with yeah. other people. Yeah. It's just no. a game at the end of the day. Simulator. Yeah, I mean, but... I'm pretty sure that everybody that's racing with me on iRacing has probably gave me a two MFNs or maybe 17. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've wrecked everybody in there probably on accident. But, <laughs> you say, I mean, shut the hell up. Go do your homework. Uh, yeah, I've, oof. Yeah, iRacing's fun, though. I enjoy it. I enjoy, it's it's so funny sometimes when guys get really wrapped up on there. Got Joey Linger on in the chat. Big fan of Brendan, apparently. We're yeah, all yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, Fucking yeah. Fucking homie is. with an extra chromie. <laughs> That's not, I, really, we got Captain just, Chromie in the chat. At this point, we, we've got we we know enough people now. I think that we all could like work together, maybe find a day that we could run some sort of league where we could get some really good close competitive racing on our racing going. Right. What happened to that South Dakota league we were going to do? Terrell that, Wheeler, if you're watching, what the fuck, man? Get it going. Yeah, the, well, the Sodak one, I, yeah, the Sodak one. Like, I remember I signed up for it and everything. And it's like, we just never... Ofer probably knows more about that. Yeah, I, I usually messaged him about it anyways. See, and the... The cool part is too is I mean you you can talk about all of us getting this league together and all being competitive. They have that two different things. Josh Van Man put on one. It becomes a shit show after a little while. Yeah. And we have the Pro Series. I mean, so technically yeah. we already got one, and it really does turn into a shit show. You get Wreck It Ross Apex in there. turns into a shit show bad. Yeah. You get Wreck It Ross. Ross. You get Joey Linger on. Joey's not a bad driver, and Joey, I'm not saying that. Joey just knows how to wreck his own dick. Like he. How do you? Oh yeah, in a heartbeat. But my goal is to take out Joey every time I do wreck. <laughs> I mean that that is my goal because if I can take out Joey, it's better. Oh, I can't even say that because last time I raced with Ayrton's, Joey, Ayrton's I was I was leading and he was right behind me. We were trading sliders no. and I was the dumbass <laughs> who put it off the inside wall. And I was like, well, <laughs> fuck. There goes that. Well, Joey's fast. Oh, Joey's fast. very fast, dude. I watched him lap the whole field at USA. I love USA in 305s. I don't know why. I'm like a man. big, big 305 USA guy. Yeah. Dude, the last time I you raced 305s at USA, I had I got fucking taken out by Josh Filet, parked it on my fucking nose, left me zero time to react, and I'm like... I'm and he was even sure. in our Discord, too, and I jumped up to the next channel, and I'm like, what the fuck were you doing? And he's like, oh, did I take you out? And I was like, you fucking... Oh, that just left. Dude, I can't I was even like, tell There's you. There's no point in arguing with you people anymore. Dude, we were like in the... Like, I don't know, like I was running a linear race. I was leading the, the heat race by like, I don't know, two seconds. I wrecked in the last corner, and I just ended up in the B main. And then Josh Flood just like cleaned me. I'm like, what? Why? Bro? Was that <laughs> Lanier? Yeah. That was Lanier. Oh my God. I remember he, that. He, I was going to make a TikTok about the that. Heck? Yeah, he did. He did. He was in Discord with us that night too. And he's like, all right, I don't give a fuck. 
I'm making the A. Next thing you know, he starts hitting we were everybody. Both in the transfer spot. Yeah, I was sure? just hitting everybody. He's like, I'm winning this B main. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, I've never, never talked to him before. I didn't even say anything. I just like, I just like, I like, I was like sitting there, and I'm like, I just looked at my screen, like, what the heck? And what I just happened? like, I just, I just literally stood up, walked on, and just left my car there on the track. I didn't even care. It's <laughs> like whatever. I'm gonna get me some drink. So Blake Walsh is in the chat. A little past you, actually, it's what noon there. So he's got the there? go emoji. Yeah, he's in Australia, isn't he? Yeah, but I didn't. I wouldn't say it's noon. It's probably a little bit later. Maybe one Hofer o'clock. Said he was. Hofer yeah. says he was laughing so damn hard. But yeah. Oh, watching that, yeah, that we were yeah, all we, laughing. We, all, we were all laughing really hard. <laughs> we weren't in the race, so we were laughing. <laughs> mm. Good oh, times. Good that's times. That's funny. How many races left on or uh, left? You, should, you got a lot to go, but any more uh, outlaw schedule stuff you got planned? Uh, yeah, I'll pull my schedule up real quick and I'll go. Gosh, I'm sorry, my phone. My phone was getting ready to die, so I had to plug it back in. Uh, no, we got about, say, close to a total of like 70 races on the schedule. Oh, wow. Uh, um, so next weekend we'll be with uh, High Limit at Burlington, World of Outlaws at Granite City. Uh, the, this will, and then it'll end up being the Knoxville season opener to the 29th, and then we'll go to uh, Mason City, Iowa with uh, IRA. Um, then obviously, I think I think really all of May it's kind of like local stuff, and some Hussets and it's all local Knoxville and Hussets oh, and some smaller stuff. So you're not gonna swing up to Ohio with in with the Outlaws in May or anything like that. No, I thought about it, but I'm just gonna do the full Knoxville points deal. So we're gonna just focus on that instead, and then the uh, um, we'll then once it gets back to wow. June, we'll do a lot of Knox or a lot of Outlaw stuff, high limit stuff, kind of again. So obviously we'll right. get the Houston High Bank Nationals and um, some of the um, the Eagle Race with high limit. And then July we'll run, you know, a little bit of everything still again. And then August, you know, I don't think we'll go back to Houston after the High Bank Nationals till like the final race in August there, uh, the twenty seventh, because I think. It's always it's dude, it's crazy. It's like every year the um the the lake, like Ozark Speedway has a, the same like deal as Houston's. <laughs> so it's like you never get to go back up to Houston's for like the big September weekend, which kinda sucks, but you know, it's like Lake Ozark's like an hour away, so it's nice racing close to home. Right. Hey, hey Joey, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hofer wants to watch the video live. <laughs> Which which What's video? The, the, the Lanier Josh Flood wrecking everybody will oh, race. Geez. Oh man, I already know I'm in that. It's so bad. I wonder if I can pull it up on TikTok. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking <laughs> to see because I'm pretty sure I got <laughs> tagged in it. Uh, oh, did Alex tag you in it? Yeah, he tagged me in it. So racing at Knoxville a lot. Are you you're more of a half mile track guy rather than the bull ring guy. Um, you know that's like a. Man, it's, I would honestly say I am more of a, like, I don't know, like, I'm more of a half-mile guy, but, like, dude, I go to Knoxville, I just love, I mean, not Knoxville, I Houston's, I love Houston's, so I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty equal, I say, I'm pretty well-rounded, um, but I tend to be better starting off on not be better starting off but i tend to like adapt to half miles a lot quicker than i do a short track but um i mean i i think we're pretty balanced on uh both aspects of it. i feel like i got my short tracks that i really excel at and i feel like the tracks i do really good at like the the middle ground three eights tracks kind of like granite city um in illinois uh donaldson in iowa then there's a few others i mean there's really not a lot of mid tracks but like wheatland uh, with the Missouri, where they have the Jesse Hockett, um, you know they they tend to be my uh, more better, not more better, but they tend to be my better race tracks whenever I uh, kind of run on the three eighths mile stuff. But I tend to adapt to half miles really well than I adapt to um, the short track stuff. A little bit slower, I think, but I feel like my short track stuff gets pretty good. Here I'm pulling right, it up right here. We got here. it. Go ahead and push play. <laughs> Is there, it's in. 
There's me on the next one in line. See, I don't even know. I'm like watching this, like, what's going on? I don't even know if it's 12x. Here's me. I'm not even like. He didn't even try to. And your like, boss. Still, I still got out, actually, I think. I was like, what? Bro, oh, you, he straight Zerfoss you pretty much. Yeah, it was. I uh, might have been a little worse. I mean, <laughs> he got into me pretty good there. That was. I, I was. I mean, I just looked back and laugh at it, but I was like, what in the? Yeah, he didn't even turn. It was full on. No. I'm sending it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> dude, that's that's the problem too. That's kind of why I don't run my racing much. Sometimes when you're a real life driver, guys will just take you out because they don't like you in real life or yep. something. You know, they'll be like I feel like I gotta make fake name on their race and not get taken out. So <laughs> Again, I, I'm watching that back, and there's so much moisture on the bottom. Adam, is it like what, what what are you doing josh like <laughs> just fl get flood, better get good things. get good dude <laughs> uh, <laughs> walsh so, i'll definitely have to go check those out later i don't think i realized in, you were in it he's enjoying some uh feeding the right rears that night i uh yeah. I texted his safety he, was probably, rating. he was probably already an 18 back <laughs> in I, his I, safety I, rating wasn't his safety rating was too high he had to drop it yeah. <laughs> Blood? I, no, it's never too high. Yeah, I texted Caitlin back on. I said, "How'd you like that shout out?" She goes, "I like it because yes, I am faster than Timmy," and he got so chapped about it. <laughs> <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes it even better. I know. I said that was the plan, dude. That oh, is that is my goal. That is so my goal. Every time I see Timmy, if I can just get him chapped about something. It's perfect because he, he'll get mad for like a half an hour and then he just drops it. But he's got a video of me passed out on the boat while we're fishing. And then he <laughs> st he snags a fish and he's like, I got one, I got one. And I'm like getting up, waking up, and I'm like stumbling over trying to help him grab it off the boat real quick. And he goes, when you take your buddy fishing and you make him your uh, your uh, your fish bitch and take off all your <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's afraid of it. <laughs> he's such a girl. You know, and the speak... only thing Grover caught was a bad sunburn and uh Nah, it was overcast. It was overcast that day, so the only thing I really caught was a buzz and a good one too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do any fishing or anything, hunting, anything like that? Uh, he's gonna fall. Never been hunting, dude. <laughs> no, no, I just <laughs> I I've never been hunting. I actually do really enjoy shooting guns, though. I like um. Like, I've shot skeet a few different times. I really loved that. Um, I've been fishing a lot. Like, we lived at the Lake of the Ozarks. I went fishing a lot. Um, but, you know, now that I kind of moved away from there a little bit, so I don't fish as much. But, obviously, it's like, I'd like to go hunting. I just don't really know, like, who to go hunting with in, um, Could around you where I'm from. Something, though. Uh, actually, this is, this is what's messed up. I actually have never hunted, but I've gutted right. a deer. Okay. Like so I you can handle someone it. else. Yeah. And they were, they were trying to get me to hit like the the bladder and stuff to like get it all over me. And Messing, I was like, yeah. I missed missed it all. I was like, yeah, I pulled the heart out, took a bite of it, even, which is like you're not. I'm mean, like, you know, like I didn't kill the deer, but I still did it because they told me to. It was just kind of like, yeah, that was, for, that was that was. Uh, I think picture, there's a picture of it your, somewhere actually. Yeah, your either spell check. yeah, either Hofer spell check is like on point. <laughs> he can't, he or, can't spell Hofer, anything. Or Hofer's just got an extra <laughs> chromie today. <laughs> he was asking though if you've got any uh, wing panels and stuff you sell he said uh, uh, better at least get a signed hero card when you're at Houston some night no he I'll, put, uh, he put I'll get singed some. he put singed hero card singed oh, hero he, card yeah he put singed hero <laughs> well, card I, I, I'll literally get a special like hero card made up where you can record a voice and I'll sing him a song oh, God. he can listen to it every time um, but no, I'm, I'm, gonna get I some, would, I'm gonna get some mini wing panels. Made I, up. I would take you out <laughs> hunting, but the only, the only problem is, is I can't own a gun, so I mean, I can't take you hunting, so otherwise, no, I'm I not gonna go. You come you to Oregon, I can't even, even own a gun. I don't no, even dude, own I, can't, a gun. I can't even take, I can't no, even own have a one. Uh, I guess I got, a, I got a handgun at the shop just in case someone sketchy shows up, you know. Yeah. So, you come Timmy, out to Oregon, I'll Timmy, take you hunting. Timmy shows up to the shop. Every time Timmy shows, shows up one day. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? I'm got to worry about racing him this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, have you ever uh, raced with any broken with an injury or anything? I broke my tailbone once, and I raced with that, and that was like oh, really painful. Like we like we took like um. We took like a pillow, we like pulled the stuffing out of it and like sewed it into a bag and like put it put it into the seat where my tailbone <laughs> was. I actually won a race with a broken tailbone. Oh. Like 
it's not that cool of a story. My dad has a cool story. He sheared his shoulder blade in half and raced the next the race that same night after he broke Ow. his shoulder blade. So, because he was, ask, though, how do you break your tailbone? Bro, it was, it was, I don't even know. I think it was, <laughs> was basketball, basketball, <laughs> basketball practice or something. I was playing bad. It was like, I was like running micros still, like 2012. And I like, I was running, I running in something to basket, or maybe it had been, I don't know how I did. I know it was during, I was, no, I was like in school. I think it was like later in the year. So it had to be like right before basketball season. And I remember I slipped and fell on the, on the court, and I think it just Blake. landed straight on it, dude. It sucked. Blake Walsh says, <laughs> dude, he goes fun times with a few blokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, dad, so here, here, here's the real question. Do we ask Ayrton the question? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, okay, dude. so oh, yeah. favorite driver growing up. I, I just need a short answer. Favorite driver growing up? Uh, Like all-time favorite. All-time yep. favorite. I mean, like Steve Kinzer. Okay, Steve we'll go Kinzer. Steve. Okay. Ooh, now, right. now, who's your favorite driver? Donnie, probably. I'm guessing. Yeah, probably Donnie. Okay, who would you rather blow your back out? Steve Kinzer or Donnie? Neither. Shot? Neither. <laughs> you gotta choose one. You gotta choose one. You gotta choose one. You gotta say Steve because you so one. I'd pick Ayrton Jenneton. I'd pick myself. I'll blow my own back out. <laughs> and that's how we came up with the broken tailbone. All right, here we go. Part two. <laughs> that, was, that was Blake's idea. Blake, not a man. He yeah, started this. <laughs> well, I like that answer. Not a man until you had a man. There you go. Oh, God. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Oh, that's awesome. You see, th this, this is why he's from Australia. Blake, can you, Blake, uh, can you put think, that on your Joey car? Just spit out his drink. We definitely gotta put Blake's gotta get that on his car, dude. Not shouldn't he be like? Shouldn't he be in middle school or something right now? class. Yeah, he should be in the middle of class or something. Hey, he might be on lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just pulling up this podcast on lunch. <laughs> really, he got suspended. He's sitting at home right now. <laughs> Probably. Oh, he's like Bradley. He's homeschooled. Oh, he goes. Oh man, I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> so he's sitting at college right now <laughs> watching the podcast. Joey, all right, that's messed up. <laughs> I don't want to know what Joey said. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's well, got Joey, an extra chrome, so you never know. So that has been the question since week one we've asked. I think the only person we didn't ask it to was Rico, just because yep. – you know, we were like, oh, we we're, we're kind of feeling out that question, but I'm like, we got yeah. to ask Jeff. We got to ask Ayrton. Yeah, Rico just kept things super, super professional. We're like, I would just I watch the History <laughs> Channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joey, if you watch the History Channel, remember, short and shriveled and to the left. <laughs> um, I just go with the flow. I don't. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I, I feel. <laughs> I mean, Rico when I was... went to school, that was pretty much all we did too. Was just watch the History Channel. That's that's how you got your GED. <laughs> what's a Joey, GED? I knew that one would get him. <laughs> what, what's a GED? A good enough diploma? Yeah. <laughs> Why have I never heard pretty that? Much. Pretty much. <laughs> I still don't have one. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You don't need uh, to hey, my, gra to my grandpa it. dropped out of school when he was like in eighth grade. Dude, so, so did mine. But see, that was normal back then. They dropped yeah, out. Yeah, back then you could get away with. Yeah, they yeah. went to work and made something. Like, now you drop out at 8th grade, and all of a sudden your like parents are in jail upon. for child neglect. But it's like, man, dude, I don't want to go to school and get shot. Well, now that oh, it's like, crazy I've been nowadays. I've for a job for, like, two weeks now, and, and nobody's going to hire somebody without one. You know, it's, it's uh -huh. like, you just have to have it in order to get a job. And it's like, well, You can't even you know, get a job at McDonald's without it, can you? No. Oh, yeah, you can't, dude. You get, no, you got to have your GED. No, you yeah, I think don't. McDonald's, you have you? to. You know, no, maybe things McDonald's. are a little bit different out there in North Dakota because they yeah. nobody fucking live out there or something. <laughs> I don't know. You guys, are, don't you guys know. only got five McDonald's in the whole state. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, we just got <laughs> cell phones. Got a lot of options, we we just got cell get. phones last yeah. year. I don't know what you guys are talking about. The Amish community <laughs> runs this place. Well, they, they don't have like... GEDs in the Amish community. They, they're homeschooled. <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you have to like go out to like, drive like an hour to get to McDonald's for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got one two minutes from me. Another yeah. one like ten minutes you got, away. You got it, one two. I got three two minutes away from me. Yeah. That's all Lima has. Cody is, also is has McDonald's high speed and... chases outside of his house that we see on TikTok. This is true. 
<laughs> this is true. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, don't do well, a lightning storm. If someone storm. ever tells you to come to Lima Land, just don't. You'll get shot. I promise you. <laughs> Tornado <laughs> warning. Where is this bitch? Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's actually it's funny. You say, that, you say that about Lima Land. Um, a guy I had working for me last year, he went out to like Stockton, California. And he was telling me stories about how they go to the car wash and then like people, like random people would show up and be like, dude, you guys need to just hurry up and get out of here. There's people down the road. They're like gangsters, like coming to rob this place or something every night. Like they're like, yeah, you just need to get loaded up and leave. It's they're like, what? Well, that's <laughs> like, I tell you every time the world of outlaws come through or they come to Eldora, they go to Attica. A lot of them stay here in Lima. And there are a few people that will look out for that. Like they, they literally circle it on their schedule, and they don't go to Eldora. They don't go to Attica. Instead, they come to Lima and try to catch them when they're working on their shit. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel like that's the worst time to catch them. Yeah. Like, uh, what are you gonna see? You're just gonna see the car. I'm sure the driver's like hiding somewhere right. because if he walks outside, he's gonna get shot. <laughs> <laughs> most of drive, most drivers don't play a big enough role. Like most drivers play a pretty decent role in the program, but like you know, like the bigger guys like Brad, David, or Carson, they don't gotta, you know, slave away on the car like some of the oh, other guys do. They got so their whole crew. Yeah, they got, they got, they got, you know, and you need to have something like that. It makes it a lot easier on the driver when he doesn't have to do all that too. So. Sure. Kurt Fisher just asked Ayrton when we're going to get our first win in 2023. He's going to get it this weekend. Erect Podcast yes. is 100% on Sprint Car it's Drivers after yep. being on the show have won their next race. So yep. Saturday, Ayrton Jenitin's winning the feature. He's going to get out. All the like, pressure's I, on. He is thinking Erect Podcast. And if he doesn't, I'm going to blast him. We, yeah. we got lucky that the World of Outlaws getting... decided they're not going to race at Nashville this weekend. Right? <laughs> yeah. He's got a better Dude, chance. Dude, it's a sign. He's got a better chance now. It's a sign. Yeah. If he don't win this weekend, he's getting jumped at Houston's. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will come be your tire guy at Houston's if you if you don't win this weekend. Okay? And that's, <laughs> hey. that's not a good thing. <laughs> the only thing we got to say is we just got to hope this place don't take rubber. They ran a race there last year with rubber down and he raced. So hopefully, oh, no, hopefully it's, yeah, hopefully there's no rubber. If it's no rubber, but we're supposed to have like an inch and a half of rain, inch and a half of rain. So really? I don't even know if it's gonna happen yet. But Melissa, I hope it's later. Years later. Yeah. Melissa <laughs> Mason wants to know where you're racing at Saturday. This weekend. Yep. Uh, Benton, Missouri, with Power Eye. If it happens, if not, then we'll just take the weekend off and uh, prepare for the high limit race at Burlington. With yeah. uh, uh, this limit. weekend's That's race gonna be on anything. Uh, or anything that's a good question i think that see they used to do the mav tv plus mm -hmm. but i know like Flo and them joined so like i can right. actually look it up right now let me check um see if they have it on there like on their you know highlighted videos or whatever I, i'd say it's gonna be i'd almost say it's gonna have to be on flow because i know i've seen some of them other races on flow before so what is it gonna be the 22nd Let's i look. think Joey said they have shootings out in California every hour. Blake goes, Joey's a bullet dodging champ. Joey goes, yeah, two <laughs> two time champ. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> two X for, for real. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think they have that anywhere. Did anybody watch the? Oh, this is like completely off. Topic. Oh no, wait. Since we're on the topic of shooting and shit, Did anybody watch the Boston Marathon like a uh, hundred and one hour thing on uh, Netflix that just came out this last week? Oh, I, didn't know that was on about, there. I have they a life. Talking about they had they had the police had a shootout in Watertown with those two guys that that committed the bombing. And they put so many rounds in the houses that were around because they had the shootout literally in this residential neighborhood. Oh, Jesus. Oh and like they, they're talking about how one bullet just barely missed a baby. And I was like, what the fuck is Dude, you nobody, get the right. That wasn't on crazy. the news. You get the, that wasn't on on the, the news, news at all. You, you get the right lawyer, man. That's compensation right there. Yeah, that's right. crazy. We're, we're, we're going to sit here and we're going to talk about gun control for people. What about gun control for the police? Holy shit. Hey, <laughs> what wow. you, you, you calm down on target there. practice. <laughs> hey, it's hey. target practice. I'm three bears deep. You guys need to catch up. <laughs> no, what's funny is, though. Um, you catch up. No, I don't think they have a streaming service, though. I just looked that up. I don't think they do. Cody. They used, they used to be on you something. You catch up. I'm working on it. I just finished it. There's three down. I'm working on the fourth one. You think this is Rockstar, but little do you know there's more in there. Really, that's the that's the canny piston because he had to pee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like laughs> when when was that? Was that the last podcast? Yeah, that, that was with Kiefer and Waddell because he didn't want to he didn't want to miss anything, and we were in the middle of Fortnite and stuff, and he just took a piss in a bottle. <laughs> 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 
No, I don't. I don't. He's just I don't dedicated to his job. Hey, Leave him not alone. Not my best moment, but hey. Got I'm, not here. I'm, not, I'm not here still trying to find this, trying to see if they got any video anywhere. I don't think they do. <laughs> let's I let's really talk sponsors so. real quick. I see you got one that came on, signed for, what, four races, five races? Three races. Three races. Three. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so obviously I got my main guys who are the Fisher Motorsports people with Kurt and Devin Fisher. Um, then I got Wet Steps, which is Sam and Kelly. Um, you know, we've known them for a long time. They were actually on my micros way back in the day, and they've, been close family friends of ours. Um, I got some local people too. Uh, the Hibden Gravel, Tony Stewart House, Stewart, uh, Tony Stewart Racing. Not Tony Stewart Racing, like the main Tony Stewart. He's kind of local in Missouri. Uh, he helps a lot of guys out around here. Uh, I got high, for, high performance lubricants, which is like they kind of, I don't, they like obviously do a lot of racing stuff. They do like yep. some food grade industry lubricant stuff as well. Yep. Um, KY Jelly. Trying to think. I got, um, <laughs> No, no, no. Cough up some. They they could find enough money. We could do something though. But then I got obviously we got our uh, we got our barge and dock service, which is our family business. We got Kenny's Tile, Travis Hebert. He's out of Kansas City. Um, uh, Scott Superior Excavating. They're a local company to us as well, down at the Lake of the Ozarks. And then uh, man, I got a lot of product sponsors: Pro Powder Coat, Midland Performance. Uh, How does it feel to be the first sprint car driver sloppy. with Fisher Price on your car? Fisher Price. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fisher Price. I was like, I don't even know what that is. I mean, I do, but I don't. I said whenever I saw your car on my racing. That's the, uh, <laughs> uh, it's good kids, like kids' toys and stuff. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. It, if Kurt's still on here, he needs to get a hold of Fisher Price and just get the Fisher Fisher thing going on. <laughs> I don't have a contact there. He may. He's had a few it, kids. I it, haven't. It'll be like Johnson and Johnson, but Fisher and Fisher. <laughs> Yeah, so we can get it all going. Yeah. No, I didn't that uh like you said, I had that sponsor for three races. They're a truck top company out of Kansas. So was that the uh, one you had in the black on your wing? Yeah. Yeah. So the black spot there, like we were we were kind of working on a deal with a uh with a company and kind of fell through and uh couldn't get it filled up in time. So I was just like, Man, I'm just gonna try something different. I'm gonna try to kind of sell that spot by the race or that by the race weekend and type stuff like that. So it's like you try to find marketing partners for like a weekend long deal. And yeah, what do you, what um, do you, you charge got a few for people. that? Uh, it just depends on the weekend and where you race, you know, it could be anywhere from what do you, what do you want for this weekend? What, what do you want for this? Well, weekend? well, there's only one night this weekend. So yeah, I'd what say do you like, want? well, since there's no TV coverage, it'd be a little bit less. I'd say like no TV coverage. What's, what's it going to take to put your rec podcast on the car for Houston's? For Houston's, like for the big weekend? No, no, like, no. Like None of us job. have that kind of money, all hey, right? Sure. My sure only right. fans ain't working no, that good. No, no, no. Don't say anything. We're just right before he goes on the track. One of we'll us just slap it on there. Slap it on the car. Really. <laughs> slap it on there. I'll be like, pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> Stickers and t-shirts. So. <laughs> we'll nah, just slap it over Fisher's. Yeah, I'm bringing yeah, a t-shirt with Fisher. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just look the other way for a minute, Kurt. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just depends on the weekend and where we're racing at, you know. And I try to, I try to make it to where it's something appealing to them. And like, just like I did with the uh, the Venturous people, I would do like a pre weekend shout out, a post weekend shout out, you know. And then every picture I post for that weekend, it's gonna have their logo on the car, and kind of like you know, you can really tell what it is. So, right. um, they were really happy with it. So I, I really appreciated Jennifer doing that with me. Um, I actually met her through my wheel dealer. Um, at Valco Wheels, so I got to thank Gail for kind of getting me hooked up with her to get me and her, you know, going on some sponsorship stuff. So hopefully, I, I think she's going to try and come back on board for the Lakeside 81 Speedway uh, stuff later in the year with um, in October with the Outlaws again. So, um, you know, yeah, it's pretty cool to try and so try and be something that's a little bit different. Name your yeah, price for this fun. weekend. Well, for this weekend, I'd just say like 500 bucks because it's only you know going to be one night. So one night, you know, you just do a quick post and Funny. usually it's like, it's like 500 bucks pay. If it's something like one night, one, two nights, I usually have the people pay for the stickers just cause it kind of like, you know, yep. it doesn't make me spend as much. Yep. And, uh, but I got a guy locally that does the stickers right away. So yeah, it ain't no big deal. What if, but uh, usually <clears throat> what would try, you to, try to, uh, what would you charge though for like, say I wanted to come do a video for you at Knoxville or something one weekend. What would you, I mean, if I did a free video or something for you, throw the sticker on the car or something. 
I can put a small sticker on there. That's that's yeah. fine. That's, that's fine. Hey, yeah, I can do that. Fine. I can put a yeah. small sticker on there. I got plenty of plenty of space for small stickers. On there. Yeah, the black black spot. We'll be a contingency logo. That's all. Yeah. That's that's fine. Right. We just got to make sure that we that put room. it somewhere so that way when he does wreck. You know, oil pan sponsor. And, oil you know, pan sponsor. It's good TV I don't get it's upside down that much. It's the oil... racing, Cody. Yeah. Oil... <laughs> Dude, them <laughs> oil pan shit. sponsors can sell. Don't... Hey, Kurt, Kurt, Kurt doesn't want to see the oil pan. He wants to see, <laughs> 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 no, he wants to see the oil, the oil pan. pan. No. Um, yeah. Well, because I want to try to find some way. Me and Hannah were talking about this last night. Somebody who I could find, like, come out and do a whole week of Knoxville <laughs> National video for. Um, yeah, it, it could be good for the driver. It could be for my business. You know what I mean? Just somebody that. Yeah, no, whatever. Good. Yeah. So. Good um, promotional Kurt, gig. Yeah, Kurt goes. You guys are having way too much fun. <laughs> you gotta have fun, man. Oh, Kurt, man, we're just loosening him up for this weekend, bro. We're getting him nice and loose for this weekend. He's gonna go out and rip. Hey, we ain't, we ain't even racing now, so we might as well have some fun with it. Right. We're already ready to go, man. I, I tore a car apart this weekend. Got my other car ready and. I got I got three cars ready. I got a 360 ready to go if I need it, and I got two 410s ready to rip. Got a spare car and trailer. We're ready oh, to yeah. go. Corey you Palm, one of our up. local non-wing drivers, goes just throwing out the stickers, Chubs. Corey, I'll be your non <laughs> or I'll be your oil pants stick or sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many I, cars hey, do you I, take with you though? Uh, well, I got I got one up top that's kind of like our spare car. Like you know, right. we got to bust it out. We can bust it out in a hurry and get it ready. Probably in about. 30 to 45 minutes it doesn't have a motor in it right so yeah. it's like we'll get it down then instantly drop a motor in roll it out and then put the other one on, and you know we'll just leave the other one out if it's like you a race put the motor in inside the trailer yeah you yeah. got a crane or something in there i'm yep. guessing yep winch. yeah we got like a like yeah we got a winch so yeah. it's like you just you got to take all the top wings and nose wings out to get yeah. the car down which is like i mean that only it's takes that bad five yeah minutes. no it ain't bad at all you take It'll a square frame with you too uh, no, we'll just take no. a complete car. We won't take okay. a, another car like that with us. But usually, if we wreck, if I go through two cars in a, like in a night or two nights or something, like usually you most of the time we're racing home. fairly close to home. You can just run home and grab another yeah. if you have to. What the size of trailer you use? Uh, so we actually uh, we got a we got like one of the full blown semis is what we got right now. So big enough know, to like pull a, a Tim trailer and with the... ride in it all the way to Beaver Dam. Yeah, pretty much. We can ride yeah. back there like Tim did. Tim, Tim did all that work. I, I he says he did all that work. Yeah, he was. I'm really telling you right now, you can't get between the mule and the cabinets <laughs> to get back to the car. I don't know, dude. Timmy's pretty skinny. He's pretty small. Uh, it's pretty tight gap. Maybe his trailer's got more room than mine. But unless he climbed, you'd have to climb up into the loft, over the loft, drop down the mule, down. and drop down the car. I think what park. they ended up doing, because his tools are you know in the back of the mule, I think they actually yeah. closed the door behind, like he came in through the. Oh, uh, they just locked him in. They just yeah. locked him nope. in. Yeah, I would have so, walked him really, in, Really, Tim, yeah, I would have never opened it. Yeah, like, like, yeah, we, didn't, we didn't make it to Beaver Dam. We're going back to Nebraska. You just got to sit back there for the next nine hours. It just hours. makes me think of Days of Thunder when they, they prank Tom Cruise and pull him over oh, with the with cop. Oh, with the cop? Yeah. yeah. That's, just, that's what I think of instantly. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, Cody, you still haven't seen it, have you? Mm-mm. God it, damn it. Movie night. It. Movie night. Gotta watch it. Got to watch that, one. and See, you, you have to watch, you have that to watch F1 Drive to Survive. The oh, only reason good. why they're bringing this up it. is because when I used to, I, I would still stream if my CPU would handle it, but when I was streaming, I used to have these channel rewards that you could uh, pay for, and it would pop up a little video of Days of Thunder, and it would tell me to hit the pace car. It was that scene of Days of Thunder. But that was like the only scene of Days of Thunder that I've really seen. Well, other than the, the scene where he's he's racing wheelchairs with the other guy, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That that's gonna be me. In, I'm in a rowdy. <laughs> yeah, that'll be me in another sixty years or so. If you make it that long, if Shay doesn't kill you first. Well, I don't have a life insurance policy yet, so <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, you're safe. For a while. <laughs> She's definitely holding out. <laughs> as soon as yeah. that goes into effect, dude, Cody's knocked. Cody's gone. Yeah, that'll be the end of Cody. No more Cody. Um. So we talk sponsors. You guys talk schedule while I was on the phone. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little okay, bit. We yeah. just talked about how many races we're going to try and run, and then obviously, you know, we're going to hit the Nationals, uh, Front Row Challenge, Cappy, try and go to the Million, uh, the Houston's oh, High yeah. Nationals. How many uh, uh, high limit races are you running? Uh, well, that's a good thing on my schedule. So we ran Lakeside, we'll run Burlington, we'll run Granite City, we'll run Eagle. 
and then I think they kind of they kind of take off for a little bit, and then they go out. Oh. I think like they got a Lincoln Park race that I was looking at, um, <clears throat> stuff like that too. So we about got a few. Te- we got yeah, about about fifty percent of them. So and then you know obviously like we're not gonna, you know we're just gonna race and race, and you know it's like running good. They got to Pennsylvania. If we're not running good, may not go to Pennsylvania. Yeah, like this year they got a. You make it up to the million, I'll definitely have to stop down and uh, in the pit. Well, I'm always usually in the pits at Eldora anyway, because you know, yeah. it's, slap it's not that much it. more expensive to just upgrade my ticket to a pit pass as well. Yeah, you get general it's a lot cooler in the pits. I'll lot definitely cooler yeah. the pits. Cody, that works Cody. out perfect. We'll slap the sticker on at Houston. You slap the sticker on at the million. Right. Yeah, yeah, there'll be two different cars. cars. Two different cars. There we go. Don't we don't care. I will be there. I will be there. I will be right there. I know exactly where the end of pit lane is. Believe me, I will slap it on there hey, before I, anybody first, even knows what happened. First time I was there, I didn't know where the end of pit lane was. I don't know if you guys knew this or not. My first time ever at Eldora, I was like, because usually it's like kind of push off the same way you do it in Oxley. You push off the front stretch and you get one, two, and the back stretch at three and four to kind of get wound up. Yep. And I was, I ran my two laps. And I, I forgot that I was done. Like, I was so focused on trying to run my line. I forgot, like, oh, hey, my laps are over. Like, I was just, like, locked in, like, so zoned in. And I go into three, and I was like, I was like oh, wow, I'm done. And I <laughs> forgot where the track exit was. And I, like, locked it up. And, there's a, and I literally spun out and parked it dead sideways. Like, didn't hit the wall or nothing. I parked it dead sideways and blocked the, the track exit. <laughs> on the pit lane, my first time at Eldora. Well, but hey, it's all right because we're a third quick with the outlaw, so it totally made up for me. looking like a clown. Like I didn't know what I was doing. There you go. Next time you, next time you go there, believe me, it's just just pull in off the back stretch. It's a lot easier. Yeah. No, we'll we'll be there. We'll be there for the million more than likely, and then we'll be there again for four. Just crowns. get on high racing and figure it's, out and where there, it is. There's two openings on the back stretch too. How do you miss the two openings on the back stretch? No, I, I pull in off four. Go the scales, man. Because it's cool. Oh, that's right. You do that. That's right. That's yeah. right. You do have to go to the scales. Yeah, so yeah, actually, you got to think. I, got, I was like, I was still wide open in three. Like, I'm in the center of the corner wide open. And you're like, oh, so shit, I have like, I have like a quarter of a corner to slow this thing down and get it turned down. And it was just like this. And I just like gassed it up and stood it up and set it down right in the center, right in the middle of the pit lane. Somehow did not touch a tire barrier, didn't hit anybody. Johnny Gibson's crazy. Like, what the hell is so, this guy doing? Yeah. My Did Johnny friend, actually like Johnny actually like talks about it when I did it? Like he got really a while. Yeah, he laughed about it. So it's my all right. first, then, I, then, I, then I went on to win the heat race though, so it was all better. But there you my, go. The, the, last, the last time that I was actually at Eldora, I saw Johnny, and I was waiting on my girlfriend to get out of the bathroom because I was going to walk her over there to meet him as well. And then by the time she comes out of the bathroom, he's already fucking gone. And I'm like, God damn it, we just missed. Like, I wanted to go talk to him about his Twitter. His Twitter feed is is absolutely oh, hilarious. hilarious. If you guys don't, yeah, if you if you guys don't follow Johnny Gibson on Twitter, what are you doing with your life? Danny Dietrich, dude, I love Speaking following of- Danny on Twitter. My my Twitter got hacked the other day, or oh, I hacked geez. a while back, dude. I I just got to like four K followers. Yeah, I did. I just got to like four K followers, and they hacked me. So so me and funny, Brad both got hacked. Funny I'm story. Sure they... My first my first night out trying to hit the scales, going off you saying that, you know. I did my qualifying and totally forgot to go to the scales. I was so jacked. I was like, yeah, this is fun. I got my buddies up in like the pit stands. They're like waving at me and shit. And I'm like. Oh yeah, hell yeah, dude. We're we're cool. You know, I, I first night out I drew a one. So, you know, I'm first car for qualifying at River City. So I went quick time for about nine seconds. It was not it nine was pretty, seconds. It was so, pretty so awesome, the next dude. guy went out. <laughs> yeah, I mean I went quick time till the next guy came out, but I'm pulling in and I didn't even think about it. I even see the guys at the scale waving me over and I'm like, Yeah, I'm going right to my trailer. I don't even care. This is sweet. <laughs> and then going off going off earlier with Croker, you know? We were yeah. talking about Jack. My first night out, you know, I'm a lot slower in the four tens with a five three, but it was it wasn't legal to run with our non wing guys, and so I just ran it with the four tens. Figured, okay, it's just it's lap times. Doesn't matter. It's just yeah. laps. Whatever. Croker slid down on the bottom at River Cities and threw a chunk of mud with a rock in it that chipped the top of my oh. helmet. Came through the the grill and everything. Just caked me. And he come over to my car afterwards and goes, "How'd you like that?" I said, "Dude, you scared the fuck out of me." <laughs> dude i'm telling you man dude, there was one time when I mean, this was like back in the micro days so i was running a micro at our local track and um they made us run the transformers on the right rear like lower rail for some yep. reason this this weekend or whatever they blow the tail tank on those two rails 
and this dude like he didn't have the thing obviously in a pouch or nothing dude i'm not kidding you bro i was like going in the corner i'm like and i always ran i've ran a rock screen since i started racing minor so i had a rock screen my whole life like i'm so used to it i've never even noticed it i remember like i'm going through the corner and i just see this green light blinking i'm like what the heck and dude i'm not kidding you like dude this thing flies in the air and it's just coming for me and i hit this transponder <laughs> with my rock screen Dude, it just, I mean, like, bro, there was yellow, like, you know, most transfers, yeah, dude, it was like, a guy hit me, it exploded the transponder, and, like, I pull in, there's just, like, yellow plastic all in the, oh. all in the cockpit, and I'm like, dude, what in the world, and I was like, I was like, what the heck, man, like, how do you not get a transponder on tight? Dude, it's funny but, that you say that, Grover, that you got hit with a big rock shit like that because i've never even heard of that i didn't think that was really a thing i figured that tracks would keep their shit a lot cleaner than that but eldora last year they resurfaced the track before the season started and then we went out there for the johnny Appleseed classic which was just late models and umps but somebody in a ump got hit with such a big mud clot that it actually broke their helmet broke their jaw and everything and we just he just spun out right there just about where you did when you did your qualifying just right before pit road <laughs> And we're like, what in the world just happened? But before that, we're watching mud clots go up over the the catch fence three and four, and it actually hits that building that's yep. up there. Well, you yeah, I remember, I remember watching that. I think, fucking far yeah, distance. You gotta, I remember watching that. You that gotta race think how tacky Larson won that night. You gotta well, Larson how... wasn't there that night. Was it? I, I thought I thought he won the late model race. Maybe he didn't. Um, no, I just thought, for the I Johnny Appleseed Classic was only like three thousand to win. So Kyle, oh, yeah, for yeah, whatever yeah. reason, why I think the only reason why he raced UMPs was he's like, you know what, I've never wanted to modify at Eldor, so I got to try it. Yeah, that was pretty cool watching him win it last night. And only a thousand bucks too. River <laughs> yeah. City, and I was like, yeah, so three thousand to win. I'm like, yeah, he's not gonna bother rolling out a fucking late model for that shit. But you know, River City. Yeah, that was that so was crazy tacky. to see I mean, though. Look at the outlaws, dude. They're running. How fast in the feature? this last year the year before i mean river cities keeps a nice track going all the time yeah they, they yeah well I, dude, they've had some really good races i mean well don't it, get me wrong i mean after cool that wrecks. incident tony tony told everybody like look we're gonna we're gonna work on the track they tore it all the back up they, they completely resurfaced it again and and eldora was really good last year i thought to to go watch last year i got to go to the to world 100 that was the first time i'd ever went for that and that was just an absolutely great experience. Eldora is just a fantastic place to go watch racing, for sure. Oh, but okay. hands down, I still think one of the better tracks to go to. And, and if you really like Houston, you've got to make it to Atomic one time because that is one hell of a bull ring to go to. And it's absolutely scenic down there in Waverly, Ohio. Like being in, nestled in the hills and stuff, it's it's just, oh, it's, it's a beautiful place to go. Yeah, I want to go to Atomic bad. Atomic looks like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to go to Atomic. I really want to go to Attica, uh, Lima Land when it's prepped right looks amazing, and then there's um, that Wayne County looks pretty cool too. And then Sharon obviously looks like a lot of fun. Sharon looks badass. It looks badass, but from what I've heard about Sharon, it's it's really not all that great. So I don't I don't know why they. I feel like them. like I feel like the race up front's always good at Sharon. I feel like yeah. if you're kind of mired in the back, it kind of gets a little bit just follow the leader type things you can't really go do a lot <laughs> well and attica is kind of the same way too it's um you know once the yeah, attica was a little, the top little out, bottom it, it's yeah. all bottom it's all yeah, it was pretty bottom dominant this weekend it looked like oh yeah it definitely was and you couldn't see shit coming out of three it was funny like i'm watching brent marks and at, at, i'm watching and I'm, we're all like all the guys around us are we're, we're all putting our bets in for the day and, and i put mine in on connor morrell because they looked really good early, and I, I kind of figured that you know he, he's probably got a g good chance in the feature. There's only I think I think he started six or something like that, and I'm like three rows back. Yeah, he's good. But once the top went away, it was it was such a bo bottom dominant track, and it was like I, I completely picked. But who was gonna pick Brent Marks from twenty? Yeah, not from twenty. I mean, yeah, not many. I mean, he started outside of Bryce Lucius for fuck's sake. Very, it's very rare to get a a charge like that. Yeah. Right, uh, and, we're, and we're watching him in the B main, and we're like, what is Brent Marks doing in a B main? And then we're watching the B main, and it's like, well, he's in the fourth transfer spot. You know, he's he's good. And then the next thing you know, like three laps left, he just decides to put the hammer down, and he, he charges all the way up to second. But still, Bryce, but Bryce Lewis just had such a big lead that, you know, the only thing Bryce is ever going to win is a B main. You know, whatever. 
I'll say that. I'll say that. I was bragging about it in the stands. I was bragging about it in the stands. I was like, I beat that guy on my way. I didn't even Okay, well, let's go ahead. Let's wrap this thing up. Ayrton, wear merch. Where can guys get it? Yeah, yeah I just head to my website. It's uh, I made it simple because a lot of people can't spell my name. So I just made it ag3racing.com. That's where all my stuff is. But, so, yeah, at Hofer. That's that's what I was getting at. I know I hope he's still watching because he always spells my name wrong. See, and I just call uh, you ASG. I just, like, when you, nah, when you, when you step you on your... AG, ASG, whatever. When you step on your dick in iRacing, I straight up am like, yep, he just ASG'd the whole field. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man. I got video proof. I got video proof of me wrecking the whole field. See, so I told, I told, I texted Randy Post, and I'm gonna throw myself under the bus because Randy didn't come in here and do it like I told him to. I texted uh, Randy. Randy. And, I texted partying. Randy and I said, "Dude, you gotta come on when Ayrton's on. You gotta just be like, why do you suck so bad at I race?" <laughs> but Randy couldn't say that. I, well, Randy's not good either. No, I know. He screenshotted it, and I go, "You, I hate you so much." He goes, "I gotta have proof that you told me to say it." Because <laughs> nah, I knew, I knew nah. Randy would be the one to say it, just because Randy just he doesn't would. care. Um, yeah, he's so funny. I, I get it though. You know, if I had my own 410 sprint car that I went racing every weekend, I wouldn't give a flying <laughs> shit about what happened on I racing. If I wrecked somebody, I'd be like. Pfft. So what, dude? You're still sitting at home this weekend playing I race. Like, go race. Yeah, you know. Uh, I got banned on week 13, man. <laughs> uh, I, dude, I'm telling you right now, you cannot run a pavement race. You can't run pavement. Oh, That's why I think I run that Delara Dash, and some dudes oh, yeah. in there are like they all get all hyped up about running Delara Dash. They think it's like I safety rating, I rating week or whatever. And this like, bro, like yo, like I, I always do Charlotte, and I'd lag way back and just get a big round the start. I'm talking like I'm like I'm starting twentieth and I'm like eighth in her in turn one. Just yum, 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 yum. <laughs> and these guys are like, "Hey, you jumped to start." I'm like, "Yeah, I did." <laughs> like I don't care about the black flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not. It's either wreckers or checkers, <laughs> you know. And then dude, I, I, this one guy wrecked him like three races in a row, and then like uh, he just reported me, and they like like, "Oh, we're gonna have to give you like a." Three day suspension. I was like, yeah, I'm not even gonna get back on for this stuff, man. It's just crazy. <laughs> well, no, it's funny. Thanks for jumping. Wait, hold on, you give me a three day. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, that's actually funny. I was actually like, yeah, I've yeah, I racing. I've had a life on I racing, man. Nim, how about this? Nim's got my contact information saved in his phone to tell you oh, if that says God. anything. <laughs> but. I also met Nate when I was at Port Royal, so it's kind of like 50-50 on that. But no, no, I'm glad you guys. Yeah, yeah, he was over at Port Royal one night. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad you nice. can, glad you can make it on, man. It means a lot you taking the time to do this. I know you got to get to the shop, get stuff ready for this weekend. Just remember, when you win this weekend, you got to throw a shout out to him. I, I know, I know. I better, I gotta win. I gotta keep you guys' streak alive. That's right. <laughs> well, do it for you guys. Sure. I was just thinking, you said it might rain this weekend and you might not get to race this weekend, so I thought it'd be funny if you didn't actually race this weekend and then you went to high limit and then you won that and we're still 100%. <laughs> and I was like, dude, hold on. If he wins high limit for sure, That'd be... we're the first people that you better say something about. <laughs> no, I'll be like, I got like, the E-Reg podcast, guys. They got me. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I could. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll shout you guys out. Get your phone ready. You're gonna have a lot of people calling you from a lot of places you didn't know about. <laughs> just, just answer yeah. everything. Hey, about. if you if you guys want if you guys want to win tomorrow night, call a Rec podcast. Get on the show. <laughs> well, and see if you if you do if you get when you, when you get the win this weekend. Actually, I am gonna make the post that says we are officially three for yeah. three. If you want to win, here's the statistics, and I'm going to post them. <laughs> and, yeah, so we're going to hopefully get some more guys on here with that statistic. But It'd be cool, too, because it'd be three different levels of racing, too. It would be. You, yeah. know, you got super local level with Matt. Then you yep. got Rico winning the Outlaws in PA. Yep. And then the high limits, or I even mean, even just this local. You know, just going to a regional show. stuff for yeah. the Midwest, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun, man. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I think you guys for having me on, you know, like, like I said, I thank all my sponsors earlier, or most of them, and you know, I just got to thank the guys who helped me a lot, which is like my dad, my mom, you know, my grandma, uh, my crew guy Steve Daniels, my tire guy Ace, and then uh, you know we got 
We're gonna lose him. Gonna right. his Porter down yeah. with Wendy, so. He's he's gonna drop due to packet loss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's playing I racing now. No, no you, you're you're, you're breaking out. up. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's gonna turn that cash flow <laughs> night on. I oh. turned it on. I got too much stuff running on the Wi-Fi. That's what happens when you live in a duplex in Warrensburg, Missouri. <laughs> just uh, just real quick before we lose you, don't forget to log out of that. Out of I won't. Zone. I won't. Um, Join us next week, guys. We got Jack Anderson going to be on, so make sure you tune in for that. Once again, thanks to ASG for joining. We'll see you guys next week.